there are so many different ways and different creative ideas to use as potting medium when it comes to orchids. And one that is growing incredibly popular these days is hydroponics, where you just have a glass of water and you put your orchid in it. And in this video, you're going to learn what you need to know to transfer your orchid that is in either peat moss or orchid bark to a hydroponic setup. Hi, I'm Amanda Matthews, and thank you for watching this video at Orchidaria. So today I'm going to be taking this orchid out because it, as you can tell, the flowers have all wilted and fallen off. This poor little thing has seen better days, but it's part of the normal orchid life cycle that the, or, the flowers will fall off. They will shrivel. If you provided the right care, this is normal. First, you need to choose the right orchid. Now, most orchids will adapt well to hydroponics, but the ones that don't are the terrestrial orchids. They need their roots to provide some sort of a stability inside the pot. Now there are two ways to actually set up your hydroponic system. Another thing to notice, you will not want to get an orchid that has been in the same media for years and then try water culture. Your orchid likes the potting media it's in, it's adapted to it, it knows how to survive, it knows how to live, and it's when you change the potting media, it's like putting it in a different culture. So you want an orchid that is fairly new. Now this one has been with me for a year. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I did not repot it when I bought it. So I don't know what is in this potting media, but we're going to find out. So the first part of getting your orchid out is to remove all this potting media. Now the stuff that this comes in, this is peat moss. Now this stuff is horrible. I hate it. I do not use this. So the secret is to get it all out. You cannot have one little bitty nudge of anything in here. That is the secret to doing a successful transplant to water culture is just get all of this out. It has to go. You cannot leave it in because it's going to be in contact, more contact with water than it has been before. So if there's any of this extra peat moss in here, it's just going to mold. When you transfer your orchid to water culture, be it full water culture or semi water culture, you can expect a delay in that year's orchids growth. Orchids do not like to be repotted. They hate it. It's they want to be on a tree for life. Keep in mind that your orchid might wilt a little bit after a few days. Um, this is normal. This is expected. Don't choose a pot like this where the top is wide and there is lots of room to evaporate. You don't want that because you want a you want the water to evaporate through a very narrow entering. So anything that you have that is similar to a fish bowl where it comes up and it narrows, that's going to be the best pot for orchid hydroponics. If it's too wide, you'll have to be putting water in there almost every day, depending on your environment. Here's the roots, but the way it is now, you can still see there's a lot of gunk on there. So I'm going to take it to the sink and I'm going to wash all of this. If See, this is the part of hydroponics that cannot be skipped over. You have to get all of this out, all of it, all of it, all of it. So I'm back and in some places the peat moss just glued to the roots. And if I scrub them anymore, you can tell there's still black splotches on the roots. If I scrubbed anymore, I would hurt the roots. So in time, it will come off, but I'll have to look at it a lot closer. I'll have to really examine to see if this peat moss that is still on the root, if it's going to collect mold, if it's going to grow algae, if it's going to get bacteria on it. I really need to take a look at this orchid. 
Now the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off this older spike. I'm not going to cut off the green one quite yet because some of the nutrients still are very few are still going to be absorbed back into the plant. So I am going to cut off the browner spike and keep the greener spike. So I have already sterilized my scissors or pruner. Hi, midnight. <laughs> So for the orchid, I'm going to cut the browner spike and I'm going to cut it on top of the closest node. I'm going to leave an inch, about 2.5 centimeters, and I'm going to cut it there. I'm not going to cut it on the node, but above the node. You can see where I'm cutting it here. So this was the brown spike. You can tell it is right there that it's still green and it's green because it's still alive and healthy i'm going to put cinnamon on that point right there be careful not to get cinnamon on the roots because cinnamon will dry out so you're going to put a little bit of cinnamon it's just your household cinnamon the same you use in cookies and and cinnamon rolls i just don't want that on the roots and i'm going to dab it on the open edge of where I cut. So now my orchid is ready to go into a vase. This one is a little too small because I had not anticipated so many roots, so I have to pick a bigger one. Now make sure that your orchid sits in your pot where the roots are going to be touching the bottom. If your roots are just dangling halfway, that's going to be a lot of water to change every other second day because you're going to leave the water in here and you're going to take it out after the second day. The vase doesn't narrow as much as I would like it to, but it does a little bit. So when that water evaporates, it's going to come up and it's going to hit the leaves. That's our whole objective for narrowing the spout of the jar how much water do you use in water culture this is distilled water right there distilled water i buy it at grocery stores it's easy to come across because my water oh because my water in kansas has a horrifically high ph there are so many chemicals in it that it is horrible to use with orchids now what i don't want to do is pour water right on that cut that i just did so i am going to lift it up above the cut okay now for this method you can see i only filled the water up to here that's about a third of the way up to the stem don't fill your water all the way up. That's one mistake a lot of orchid growers do when they start this hydroponics is they want to, oh, it's in water, so I'm going to fill all the roots with water. Orchid roots are not adapted to stay in water all the time. They need that drying out period. So if you keep them constantly in water, they will mold. They will grow bacterial rot. They will get root rot they they do not like it keep an eye on your orchid just because your orchid is reacting a little badly don't panic and don't put it back in bark the worst thing you can do is go from bark sphagnum moss leca pebbles river rock water culture and go right back to orchid bark your orchid needs stability it needs time it usually takes about a year for your orchid to adapt to this method other video I'm going to explain all the difference between distilled water soft water rainwater 
reverse osmosis water what's the best water for your orchid and since you're growing hydroponically you will need to know what is the best you can provide because that's all it's getting i hope you liked this video if you did please like and subscribe and i hope to see you in the comments below